Okay, by the quest of Mr. J. Taylor, <laughs> um, we are recording this one. It is 2004, question 23. Um, it's the one with the. I can't actually show you that. It's the one with. We've got some of the bards used to part of an oil well called the manifold on the seabed and here's all the information you need. Right, let's start thinking about this, what we need to do. So, as soon as you start seeing stuff with water and with things lowered into water, you must start thinking about pressures rho gauge, okay? And pressures force over area. It's a pressure um, question, okay? Um, the manifold is under uniform cross-sectional area and mass 5 times 10 to 4 kilograms. The master cable may be ignored. Okay, so we're, we're not thinking about the master cable. Uh, calculate the tension of the cable when the manifold is held stationary above the surface of the water. The water? <laughs> the water, Mr. <laughs> right, so what, how are we going to calculate the tension in this, this uh, cable at the surface of the water, Fraser? W equals mg. Why is that? Why is it W? Downwards force. Downwards force, yep. But why, why is W equal to the tension? Ross? Yep, but there's a very kind of simple rule that we talk about. It's one of three rules. This is the first one of these rules. It's not going anywhere. Of course, it's balanced. Or it's balanced. So object may be stationary or moves at a straight line at constant speed. I like that number and balance force. This object stationary, therefore the forces are balanced. The forces are balanced. The tension in the rope and the weight of the object. And the weight of the object will just be mg. Okay, so we'll just get MG for that. I'll show you solutions in a second. It's only worth one mark. It's really a kind of standard grade question, really. Uh, the manifold is lowered into the water, then held stationary just below the surface as shown. So it's below the surface of the water this time. Does the weight of the object change now it's below the surface, James? So when you go under the water, you get, you, you get lighter. You do? Okay, so when you go under the water, does your mass become less? No. no. But you get lighter. Yeah. How you tell me? Right. Who else agrees with that? It's technically true. Is it? Sort of, yeah. It's mass stays the same, but what? Sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really? It's, 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 it's kind of right. It's kind of right. Well, you don't get lighter. No, you don't. Your weight stays the same. Yeah, but mass stays no, but weight, mass Does gravitational constant change? Uh, gravitational <laughs> constant? Does that change? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 gravitational constant does not change. And weight is mass times the gravitational constant. So your mass doesn't change. The constant doesn't change. So your weight doesn't change. Your weight doesn't change. Even though I'm not doing the Macarena. <laughs> okay? Right. So your weight's not changing. You're under the water. Your weight's not changing. Although you might feel lighter, your weight is not changing. Something is opposing your weight to make you feel lighter. And what is opposing your weight to make it feel lighter than? Up thrust, good. When you're standing above the water, you don't feel up thrust. Okay, when you go under the water, you've got this property of water known as up thrust, which is supporting some of your weight. So your weight doesn't change, it's just being supported by the up thrust of the water. Okay, so now we have this idea of the up thrust and the tension in the rope, and we still have the weight of the object. So on this diagram, so you draw a little box, and in that box, I want to see some forces written on this. You're going to have the weight of the object. So down the way, you're going to have weight. Okay? You're always going to have weight. Just about in every single mechanics problem you're going to do, you're going to have weight acting down. Okay? Then we have a tension acting up. So W, uh, sorry, T, tension, is going to be up the way because it's still getting pulled up via this tension in this rope here. That's still going to be tension. But you feel a bit lighter, so something has to balance out that weight, so you're also going to have up thrust. Which we can call F for the moment. Okay? Or whatever you want. It's a force acting up the weight, and that'll be our up thrust. I'll show you solutions in a second. The tension of the cable is now 2.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons, which means it's dropped since part A, because you should have worked out the tension of the rope in part A. It is now dropped since part A. Stop that, Ross. Show that the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom surface in the manifold is 3 times 10 to the 4 pascals. The first thing that's really making you understand here is the difference in pressure. Okay, What is the difference in pressure? What does the difference in pressure allow you to calculate? David. Gary, you. 
what is the difference in so if you, what is the difference in pressure allow you to calculate in something? If you're given the difference in pressure acting on an object under the water and you're given its cross sectional area, what can you also calculate? Force. Known as up thrust. Okay, so if you know the difference in pressure then you, and you know the cross sectional area, you can work out the up thrust. Now when we did this, um, when we were doing mechanics, we calculated it different ways. We would calculate the force in the bottom of the container and calculate the force in the top of the container and get the difference in the force, which would be up thrust. Or we can calculate the pressure on the top, pressure on the bottom, get the difference in pressure and use the same cross sectional area to give us up thrust as well. So that this, whatever way you do it, the difference in pressure is giving you this up thrust. So when it says calculate the difference in pressure, really you need to calculate the up thrust to do that and then use the cross sectional area. So to get the up thrust, we know the weight, we know the tension, we can get the difference in the why the tension has now got smaller, okay? Um, so the tension was equal to the weight in part A, it's now not. So you take the, the first tension, the difference between them, you get your up thrust, and you do F equals MA, sorry, not F equals MA, force equals pressure, pressure equals force over area, uh, and then you get pr your, your pressure there. Right. Last one, the manifold is now lowered to a greater depth. What effect does this have on the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom of the surface of the manifold? Justify your answer. So you must say what difference it has, and then why. Okay. Does the height or the length of the object change as it goes deeper in the water square? No. So what also changes as it goes deeper in the water, Carson? What will change as an ob any object goes deeper into water, what changes? Yes, if it goes deeper into water, the depth is changing. Yep, well done. What else changes with depth in water? Before that, before you think about up thrust, what changes? If I go deeper into water, my ears will start to hurt. Why? Pressure. Pressure. Okay? Pressure will change as you go deeper into the water. Okay, if the pressure changes as you go deeper, then you're going to have a greater pressure on the bottom of the object. You also have a greater pressure on the top of the object. So what's asking here, does the pressure difference change? Well, no, it doesn't. Because the actual, the actual pressure has, has increased the same as it gets deeper in the water. Okay, so it's 2004. Let's quickly have a look at these solutions. Okay. So here we have first bit, the tension equals the weight, so equal is 5 times 10 to the 4 times 9.8, equals 4.9 times 10 to the 5 newtons, one mark for that. Give us a wee tick for that if you got it. Uh, keep going further down, what forces are acting on it. So tension up, buoyancy force or up thrust up, weight is down. Um, you could have pull of gravity down, force of gravity, I do not want you to write that because I don't think it is force of gravity, but... Um, SQA seem gravity. to disagree with me. What? Oh, gravity. gravity is not a force. What about gravitational? Gravitational force. I allow gravitational force because it's a it's a force caused by gravity, but gravity itself is not a force. It is a constant. Right. Um, so that one, that's the diagram I'm looking for. That's two marks for that. You will get um, all three labels gives you two marks, and you take one off for each incorrect or missing label. Uh, let's go down a bit more. Up thrust equals weight minus tension. Your up thrust should equal 2.4 times 10 to the 5 newtons. So you get half mark for doing a subtraction, half mark for getting the answer. And then pressure's force over area, plug your numbers in, get the answer, get the units, and you should have, uh, should get your pressure there of, um, your, your, sorry, your, your, your pressure. It's over another box. It's over another box. 3 times 10 to the 4 pascals. <coughs> uh, you've it's got over another box. Okay, right. And the last bit at the bottom there, no change or difference in pressure is the same. Difference in pressure depends on height or thickness, the shape difference, and since pressure equals rho gh, or pressure is proportional to depth, there's no thickness change, so height two, h2 minus h1 will be the same. There's no height change. So as you increase pressure as you go down, then difference in pressure will still be the same as you get deeper in the water. Any questions about that one? Anyone? I think that's quite a straightforward question. There's not, there's not anything trying to trick you there. Um, what I can see some of you doing is I could see some of you maybe 
uh, looking at that second part there, working out the pressure difference, this one here, I can see some people find it spending too long on that. Okay, just trying to work out pressures and they don't have the density and trying to get confused with that. So just try and remember the information you're given in the exam will allow you to answer the questions fairly straightforward. Any questions about it? Anyone want to ask me about any of those at all? No. Okay.